Welcome to another Planet Zoo tutorial. Today we're taking a look at habitats, specifically at barriers, specifically at um, this chaos. Don't worry, I know that they're not beautiful, but that doesn't matter. These are just demonstration objects. So what I've done here is I've decided to show a few different ways you can build habitats. Now there's more than just these, of course, but this is like the, the rough idea. I know that a lot of people just build like sort of basic habitats like this with preset barriers, which is cool. But I'm going to try to show you some ways to build more intricate habitats. You can mix different techniques that I'm showing you here. And there's also some additional things that I will be telling you that I don't show here because I didn't want the game file to crash by placing 10 of my pre-built habitats. So whatever, let's just start. In case you haven't watched any of my other tutorials or you're still a little confused by how habitats work, I'm going to explain that first. So let's work with this little guy here. The game recognizes anything as habitat as long as it has a gate and a barrier. So these here are all your applicable barriers, like from the null barrier to the edge noise. And uh, the null barrier is actually the one that you can see on all of these habitats. Well, not that one, but all the others. And what the null barrier does is it's essentially a way of telling the game where a barrier is if you're not using any of the predefined barriers, such as concrete or steel mesh or red brick, for example. So this one here uses a predefined barrier. Um, so there's this habitat over here. The other ones don't. So what you have to do, you have to go and just uh, apply a null barrier, and then that's it. And then anything can be your barrier. Well, most things. So what you always have to take into account is whether animals can climb and whether objects are climbable. Uh, for example, you might have some items in construction that the game tells you, hey, that's climbable. Trees, which are climbable usually. Oh, I don't know, do we have anything here that's not grass? Climbable. Mm. Right, so these would all be climbable, right? So building a barrier out of just these, if you have animals that can climb, is probably a bad idea. But for example, with these rocks, most animals won't be able to jump on top, so they're completely safe. You can also use smaller rocks that um, is something like usually most animals can jump that high, so you just have to be careful that they can jump over it and adjust it. So obviously this here is the basic way to do it, with a pre-made barrier, with pre-made... Um, I'm gonna call it stats, I suppose. And um, everything you build by yourself, of course, you'll sort of have to guess a little bit. Generally, any object you from construction is maximum strength. So you can put a tiger in there, you can put a tiger in there, you can put a tiger, you can't put a tiger in there, but you can put it in there. So that's that's a point. If it's glass or if it says that it's see through, it is see through. If not, it's not. And yeah, so this here is the second version of a habitat that I built, which is like the basic version of a building, essentially. This will also hold all animals, obviously, because it's pretty tall. You know, they can't really jump out. You can use these as windows. You can also insert glass barriers for actual windows. And you can put another floor on top of this, um, just as a little demonstration. If we were to take like um, a floor, these, right? Not the right one it from the group, move it up, move it up, and then you had like a few of these around here, and you did like ramps or something, which you can use normal wood or any items for ramps, or if you're, you want to be careful, there's these climbable ramps, change the angles, but I think most animals can actually climb to 60 so yeah, I know, but yeah, so like the animal could then climb up here especially monkeys or something, and go onto the second floor, as long as you have another barrier surrounding this thing. And you could have like a second visitor path raised to go along here, and then you'd have a two-floor habitat if that's what you want. Once again, excuse the crude build style I'm trying to demonstrate mechanics. <laughs> what I've done here is, once again, pretty simple, just took a few larger rocks and put them next to each other. This also works, and uh, for like 95% of animals, you can totally just go and like lower the rocks into the ground. Like this on its own might be tall enough, this on its own is certainly tall enough. 
just lower it like by this and most animals won't be able to get out. Which, in case you don't know how to check that, go into the heat maps and then into the habitat. There, I'm stupid. And then for transversible area. Transversible area. And then you just click on the animal and it's going to show you whether it can jump or climb um, out of the habitat. And if it can't, habitat safe. Once again, with any natural barrier you use, you have to go and use these invisible um, null walls. This here is uh, terraforming. Uh, terraforming works both ways. You can also go and terraform a barrier. Like you could go like this, right? And be like, oh, well, that's it's raised is like a few meters, right? And then use the, the button tool and pull it like that. And you'd have to fill it in, but you know what I mean. And then this could be like your um, wall of the habitat. That would also work as long as the animals can't climb the inside. And what we've done here is we just lower the habitat into the ground. You do have to somewhat secure the entrance usually. But um, you can do this once again with anything, with natural barriers, with really really short fencing, whatever. So what we've got here is fence pieces from the construction menu. Something that I think a lot of people turn to. There's a nice variety, they look good. And uh, as you can see, I'm using a few different pieces here because in my own experience, all of these work. Like I've had lions in a habitat with these sort of barriers. I've had tigers in a habitat with these sort of barriers. <laughs> Monkeys, it doesn't really make a difference. Because if you click on them, they're actually gonna, the majority of them don't have a height. And so you have to be careful, some of the new ones... I do say that they're one meter high, so the game will recognize them as one meter high. Um, same with this one. But for the majority of them, it doesn't say anything. So the game just recognizes it as a stable object and the animals can't cross through at all. So you could probably use this as a realistic barrier for most animals. <laughs> and once again, just, you know, use a, a null barrier around it and you're done. These two here are walkthrough habitat. Now, there's two versions of walkthrough habitats. There's walkthrough habitats that are open, like this one, where the people will go in and they can interact with the animals and uh, well, they don't really interact. But you know what I mean? There's nothing separating the visitors and the animals. Animals are totally chill with that. Which works, for example, with giant tortoises, I believe. Yeah, guests can enter the habitat. So this one here, guests can enter as well. And you can have this open. You can have monkeys in here. I had this for two lemurs. They're like both kinds of lemurs. And I just had the guests walk through here and had the lemurs on both sides and they could climb over the path and everything. It was quite nice. But what you can also do, and I'm gonna actually pop up one of my habitats for that. Um, um, what is it? it was the bone bows. If you want to see the speed builds for these, uh, they're all on my channel, but I'm going to use them to demonstrate what I want to show without having to build it again. Big, big bono habitat. But uh, where we need it, roughly. Modify it. Then don't modify it! Okay, well that's how it wants it, I guess. That's how you want it and that's how you get it. But here is a walk through path that is completely blocked off. So your visitors could go in here, they could take a look at the animals from all angles, but while they would walk through the habitat, and you know, it is technically speaking in the habitat, it's completely fenced off from the animals, so the animals won't care. Which is really, really cool if you do these sort of like large houses, and you know, just have people walk through them, and then the animals can climb around them. You could do two floors, you know, like you could raise up um, some dirt to this level and then you could have like an underground area where guests can look into tunnels or whatever yeah, It gives you quite a lot of options And one more thing that applies to certain animals uh, Which is what I've utilized with the Borneo and orangutan habitat. I can place that one Yes, okay You can't see it here because uh, but here, There's water as you can see, the only thing I've blocked off is the infants, very, very, um, sparingly. 
But this works because a lot of monkeys will actually not be able to cross water. Go up here and we take a look at the Bonobo. We'll see that water is a possible barrier. Only works for monkeys though, so uh, don't do it for others, but it's another way to have a natural barrier around the habitat. Right, so now let's talk to the things you can't do. Because uh, I've spent some time on Reddit and I always get posts like, this isn't working, this isn't working, I'm building it, but it won't recognize that what am I doing wrong? So here's a few. Don'ts. First of all, you can stack habitats. You can have a tiger habitat and a lion habitat on top if you do multiple floors. It doesn't work. Um, essentially think that the game only measures this line and it measures that line in all, all the way up and all the way down. But it doesn't recognize a maximum height for habitat. Habitat goes all the way up, all the way down. So you can't stack another habitat on top. Um, another thing you can't do is place generators and such inside habitats. The game doesn't like that. Something else you can do is use multiple habitat gates. And while I'm sure that you have already realized that, when you go into more intricate builds, you suddenly start to realize, but I need multiple habitat gates. For example, uh, one specific post I read was about someone who built a pool. So a ring of water, similar to how we have it here, with one island in the middle, and he wanted the entrance for the zookeeper to be in the middle. Right? But, well, he had a gate outside. So even though there were different barriers, he couldn't do that. With the additional issue of the game actually recognizing it as two habitats, because a habitat can only have one completed barrier. So that's like the basic things. One door, one barrier. Like if, if I wanted to take a little area here in the middle, like, let's say I want this island to be a visitor area, right? No animals, just visitors. I can't use a fence to block it off. I have to use some sort of natural barrier. Just raise it up or leave the water and remove the bridges. That would be enough. But the game won't let you place a habitat inside a habitat, is it? And uh, if you wanted, like, ring-shaped habitats, just make sure you separate the middle from the rest somehow. <laughs> or... Uh, which is what I usually do, is you just connect them. So once again, say we want this island to be gone, right? We just take a barrier. Lie in this thing here. I'm gonna do this very, 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 very crudely. Just ignore it. Right. And now this on its own wouldn't... <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay, chill. Wouldn't work. If we go and now connect it to the outside, this would all be one connected barrier, so that would work. The animals, however, wouldn't be allowed to cross that area. Because otherwise you'd get the game being like, something crossed the null barrier, warning, warning. So uh, the ideal thing is to do is to just cover it with some stones or decoration or whatever. Other things you can't do. Let people walk into habitats you shouldn't walk into. I think that's pretty obvious. Building barriers with plants is something I find to be quite problematic. Like, Technically speaking, a lot of plants, like Ava, to place this tree, there's an area around the bottom that the animals can touch. So you could use them as barrier, but, um, well, if you don't want to use these huge trees next to each other all the time, it's going to be hard. Stuff like bamboo and such doesn't work all that well. Just squeeze some stones in or whatever. And, yeah, what else that I wanted to make? Can't have water running downwards. That's uh, something you might want to do. You're doing like a river. You can't do that. Uh, but other than that, most things are doable. Just keep in mind how your tools work, how the null barrier works, how the habitat gates work, and then you can do just about anything really. If you want glass somewhere, but you don't want to use a barrier, you can also just go into construction and pick some glass wool. You know, like, like so. Okay, maybe not these yeah, these pieces. You'd also have, like, a... Why are you a door there? <laughs> You'd also have a glass barrier without having, like, glass. Because this would be one meter high, but also it would be, like, maximum thickness. In comparison to, say, this glass, which is resistance 2. And another thing that I'm going to show you based on this thing here real quick. Technically speaking, just the basic barrier information, but someone doesn't know it. 
First of all, let's turn this into a non-see-through barrier like red brick. What you can do is you can just go here and pick a glass. One-way glass if you have it researched. So this will actually count as maximum grade safety. Or safety of whatever resistance of whatever item you're using. So resistance grade 5, even though we're using glass. Just another little thing that you might want to know. And yeah, that's how, that was 50 minutes of me explaining how you can do barriers and how you can't do barriers. You can find a lot of these uh, sort of slightly weird habitats in my uh, Planet Zoo speed build series. I'm currently at the thing, Famos and Blackbird. I'm doing them alphabetically. So going through all the animals and building small basic habitats for them that anyone can use. That don't have a lot of pieces. You can just place in a beginner zoo and... You know, be happy with it. And I'm also doing any habitats upon request. So, if you want to see me build something, or if you're not sure if something works and you want to see it working, uh, go ahead and write that in the comments. And if you want to see more ways to build habitats, or ways to utilize all of these basic methods, go and check that playlist out. As I mentioned before, there are some other ways to make your habitats work. But these, I find I like the basic ones and they serve to demonstrate most things you can and can to do. And yeah, if you have any questions related to barriers and building, um, feel free to put them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer all of them without saying anything weird. And I hope this helped you. I hope you'll find some new ways, or you've already found some new ways to build habitats for your zoo to make it look a little more interesting. And I hope I'll see you again in another video. Bye!